Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome back. It's Rahul. It's been a minute since I made a video. Sorry, dude. Um, holidays came around. Work started. Things have been a little bit hectic. I've been figuring stuff out on my own end a little bit. But I have been <clears throat> back on the grind a little bit. Um, not full-time content or anything um, again, but I'm going to try to put out something every week a little bit, like an update or just like a deck list or something for you guys um, on here or on Twitter, or I'll be trying to plug content where I can when I can, <clears throat> I haven't been uh, not posting stuff for Dallas because it's not like a no leaks thing. It's just, I've been very lazy recently with the holidays and everything and um, the job starting. <clears throat> I haven't had a chance to really test. So this is one of the first ideas I had in this format. I know we're like two weeks out of Dallas, so it's a little bit late for something crazy, but it's something that I've been testing a little bit and I've been liking it a lot. Um, the list has been molded over like, you know, 20, 30 games. And here's where I am. Um, with this list um, so the deck is uh turbo dragons i want to call it turbo turbo dragons and friends turbo dragons and friends i guess yeah okay so the idea of the deck is um i got the idea from azul's um uh reshiram deck rom ho -Oh, uh ex deck um that i thought was really cool because you could use flare flared fable bolts or whatever uh fabled flare bolts really well the damage a lot of damage and expanded and it's super consistent and it's really scary to deal with a lot of the time in my opinion and like a format where um control kind of exists and things like egg ground stuff exists for a single dde and some fires you can just pop off and beat someone and that's pretty alluring to me so without further ado let me get into the deck a little bit and why i picked some of the cards i picked through some testing one shaman to hand refill um, i don't think you need more than one because there's two to dene i feel like there's more often than not <clears throat> because the higher counts of cards we play, we have to discard some stuff here and there, and I don't mind discarding cards and destroying more. You can interchange that count to two uh, to Shaman, one to Dene, or, you know, vice versa, however you feel like playing it. Um, I didn't feel like the need for Lele is there because of the counts I already have for supporters are pretty low, and, like, I think I see enough of the deck anyway as fast as I go. So, yeah, there's one Giratina EX. Um, this is an old-school card, if you guys remember this one. Um, and the biggest thing, uh, biggest reason I have this in here is in case of like Mega Ray and <clears throat> other random Mega Pokemon coming back um, into the format somehow. And I think Chaos Wheel is a really good attack if you can pull it off in one turn. Um, it's a card that's definitely cuttable and on the chopping block. It's one of the tech cards that I have in here that I'm just currently trying out um, to see how it works. Um, this is one of my favorite cards in the deck, um, Nagaguz GX. Uh, <clears throat> Jet Pierce doesn't really matter, but Chaotic Order is a really good way to seal out the game if... You kind of find yourself in a checkmate position that's one attachment to this guy or an elixir plus a double dragon energy and you can get two prize cards for free which is kind of nutty in my mind there's this rush from roaring scars which you guys may or may not remember um it has turbo blaze which says once per turn it's your active you can attach a fire energy to one of your dragon type pokemon so initially when i was testing i thought it was all pokemon and i put a lot of fire pokemon in here and made it kind of like a fire dragon toolbox but after a little bit of testing and, and after reading the card after one game i quickly realized i messed up but Turbo Blaze is really good because you can set up a flared, uh, Fable Flare Bolts for 270 turn one almost every time if you need to. He's like, he's 130 HP, so he's pretty tanky. You can sack a prize for him. Um, probably the best opener in the deck. Uh, you can use Brightwing, I guess, if you need to against Safeguarders, um, which is pretty good too. But otherwise, the card overall, I think, is really good. And I like it. Uh, I think three over four is fine because with four, I felt like I, the fourth one didn't really actually make a difference to me. And I'd rather have a spot for this guy who I'm going to explain in a second. There's three Rush Ravens deck rounds because I also don't mind opening him. He's a really good opener. It's fine. I just go DDE, Welder to bench, Blacksmith to bench, um, Elixir, whatever. You know, I can fl uh, Fabled Flare Bolts for energy super, super quickly. Um, discard up to three combination of Basic Fire and Lightning, 90 times from the bench. Um, I don't play any Lightnings, as you guys are going to see in a second. Um, and that proves a big problem against things like Honch Crow. So that's where this guy comes in. Or decks like Honch Crow and stuff that say no special energy like Noivern, etc. Flare Strike and Outrage are really good in those matchups. Um, so being able to use a basic fire energy attacker, I don't know if Reshiram Charizard is the correct one for Shea, but he's the one that I've been liking so far. Um, Break Sword is also something I've considered, um, because Break Sword is pretty good, but I don't think Break Sword does enough damage to warrant a slot against, um, uh, Hunch Crow, which is the biggest thing. I just want to knock it out. And Double Blaze, I guess, is like an end-all, be-all GX attack that if I can ever get the six fires on here, which I mean, in theory, isn't too hard, but since I'm discarding fires every turn, it could be hard. Um, I can pop off and, like, blow someone up. So, you know, that's the Pokemon line. A spec of choice is Comp Search. I don't really know what would be better. I don't think Dowsing would be better in a deck like this. Um, I don't know. Scoop Up Cyclone kind of sucks. Um, Gold Potion's kind of meh. 
Um, scramble switch could be okay. I don't know. Uh, that one, that one's something I could consider, I guess. But other than that, I think comp surge or scramble switch are like the only two real A specs for this deck in particular. There's one energy recycler because a big problem I was finding out without the ho version is that I'm running short on energies here and there to end the game. So having one to two, I had two energy recyclers, but one got caught for a blacksmith because I'm testing it. But one to two energy recyclers is the correct amount. I feel like kind of like playing Vikabulu where you need the energies back in the deck because you discard the energies and, you know, the drill. For Max Elixir, um, you want to hit him. If you don't hit him, whatever. Um, I think you could play three if you need to. Um, it, but then you'd have to up your accounts of like Welder or VS Seeker or like a Stadium um, is what, what would be the fix, I think. There's three Nest Balls. Um, Nest Ball finds everything in your deck besides the Dedene and the Shamans, which are then found by your four Ultra Balls. Um, perfect, right? It works out perfectly. Um, seven ball counts. That's super, super consistent. Gets you what you need. Um, you should never have trouble really setting up um, with those kinds of counts um, or getting benched, really, honestly. Um, you have so much consistency in those aspects. Um, there's three switch and three floatstone. I'm just going to lump those together because they're kind of um, serve similar purposes. Um, you can go 4-2 if you'd like. Also, I simply like 3-3 three, three because I don't know exactly what is stopping tools right now or what is stopping switching outs right now. Um, I don't really understand. Like, I haven't played enough of this meta to understand 4-2 better or in either way or 3-3 three, three is just better for now. So for now, when I'm testing, my like thought process is like a 3-3 three, three, and then I can go from there. So that's like an interchangeable thing. Um, you do want to move the treasure arm consistently. Um, and everything in the deck has very high retreat costs. Um, three, three, th two, but like, you don't want to put energies on this guy. Three, three. So these are the only guys who have one, but yeah, like I said, everything in the deck is pretty big. So you don't want to move things around. Um, and depending on if the like, Conchco is big or something, you can move it around like that, you know. Um, three VS Seeker, you don't really need four. I like to have more supporters because I think Eggrow is going to be pretty big. And I don't really want to discard, like, you don't. Really need to use VS Seekers too often in the deck. It's just like it's a good VS Seekers like a good card. So it's just like you gotta play it, but I don't think four is needed. Um, two giant hearts, mostly just counter stadiums. Um, that anything and they help you get what you need. Um, I tried Heat Factory for a little bit. I didn't really like it because I'm already discarding so many fires. I felt like the draw wasn't really worth me getting rid of one fire because one fire meant 90 damage. Um, I think Swell could be good um, in the deck uh, to deal with Silent Lab. Um, yeah, but most of the hearts are for Silent Lab, and, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the reasoning for those. Um, there's one Blacksmith. Granted, like I said, Blacksmith only attaches to Fire-type Pokemon. So, why is there one Blacksmith over a Giant Recycler? I have the one Blacksmith I'm testing right now, because that's technically four Blacksmiths if I need it, um, to go onto this guy. And a Blacksmith plus an Elixir plus an Attach is 230, or just a Blacksmith is a free 180 damage, as opposed to Recycler plus Welder, which I have to then find as a combo. So having just one blacksmith isn't the end of the world. It just would kind of like, because the blacksmith and the recycler at different points of the game will kind of be dead cards at their own, like, right. So why not just play one copy to try it is what I'm, my theory right now. Two Guzma, you can pick off anything on the bench. Zoroarks are gone, Shamans are gone, Lele's are gone. Any two prizer that hits the bench is not safe besides ADP right now. ADP is the only thing I can't one-shot technically, but that's, that hasn't been a problem so far um, in testing. Um... Uh, Ends Resolve has come out, uh, and that card is good. There's only one copy because in, in the instance that we need to use Crossbreak, GX's extra effect for 170 and then 170 Snipe. Getting the four energies for Crossbreak is pretty easy, but 170 is nothing compared to, you know, Fabled Flare Bolts a lot of the time. But if we can pull it off with an Ends Resolve to clean up maybe like a Lele and a Shaman or like take four prizes or three prizes in one turn and kind of put ourselves in a position that's um, super, super far ahead, that's why there's one copy, um, just to give myself that option. Um, not necessarily an option that we need to do every game or something, because we do have another GX attack in Double Blaze, but we do have a bet, like the best GX attack in the deck is Chaotic Order by far. Um, because the free two prizes we could be getting here, we could also be getting here. It's just, this could be done one attack, this takes two attacks, or two turns set up. For Juniper, um, best card in the deck, you just got to draw, draw, draw. Um, I don't, you can also do a 3 3 split of Juniper and Welders, because Welders are also really good. You have so many ways to find fire energies. Um, Welders are also really, really good in this game. Um, Pretty good, pretty good supporter. I got the idea. Like at the high, the deck is a hybrid of between like Azul's deck um, and Ahmed's deck. They got top 32 at um, Richmond with, um, and so I kind of took the idea of both because I wanted like a fire fire box and then like a dragon box, um, and I kind of just like meshed the two together. And this was a hodgepodge that kind of came out. There's four DDEs. I mean, it's the bread and butter of the deck. Everything in the deck attacks with a DDE except for Reshiram, um, and I guess Shaman if you want to be like, yeah. 
But <laughs> there's 10 fires. Um, I know 10 fires is pretty low for an elixir count. But the elixirs aren't meant to be hit every time. It's simply just a little bit of extra gas to get the damage going early. In the mid to late game, the elixirs are pretty dead, which is a little bit sad to say. So you could go like 3-2 here even. Um, because late game, you want to be like Weldering or Blacksmithing or like just just getting cards. Like with, with all this dig, you should be able to hit a Welder. If you need to hit a Welder, you should be able to hit an Enzo's Wall or Blacksmith if not prized. So you should be able to hit all the pieces you need to hit if you want to hit them. So... This is kind of the idea behind the deck. Um, I've played a couple games with it. I like it. Um, I've got a lot more work to do on it. Um, but I wanted to put it out there to give you guys time to experiment. And, um, you know, kind of bring my content back a little bit. Um, and I might stream. Who knows? Expanded. I, I like, want to learn Expanded. And I guess we can learn together. Um, so, I mean, thank you for watching. I appreciate everyone who's been supporting me still. Who's been hanging out, waiting for another video. I'm sorry for how long it took for another video. I'm really, really sorry, but I will try to put something out as frequently as I can until Dallas. Um, and so thank you guys for supporting me and leave a like, subscribe, and you know, the drill. Um, hopefully we'll be back with some content and hopefully I'll get a bees list out there or something for you guys coming up. So thank you guys so much for watching.